I'm back for video number two. My name is Joanne and my channel is The Desert Stitcher. Um, I just wanted to thank everybody who subscribed and watched video number one. Uh, I honestly didn't know if anybody would watch it, but I think when I checked yesterday I had over 200 subscribers, so that's pretty exciting. Um, the day I uploaded the video, I actually, I want to say it was like less than 10 minutes later, I was on YouTube. Um, like working in the settings, getting everything set up, and I checked and it said I had one view, and I was like, <gasps> somebody's seen it. And I was like, oh no wait, I think that was me. <laughs> because I wanted to see how the, um, the little intro clip looked, so I went on and started playing it, and then um, just watched the intro clip and stopped it. So yeah, I think I might have been my first viewer. <laughs> Um, but then it really picked up, especially Sunday, Sunday afternoon. I guess Sunday afternoon is a big floss tube watching time because y'all were blowing up my phone with some YouTube notifications. Uh, so-and-so commented, so-and-so has subscribed, so-and-so has subscribed, new comment, new comment. <laughs> that was pretty exciting. Um, everybody has been, was really nice in the comments, very encouraging. Um, Death by Cross Stitch seems to be the fan favorite, which makes me happy because I think it's probably my favorite. Shh, don't tell the others. Um, but yeah, if you're watching this and you're someone who has been thinking about maybe making a video but has been kind of hesitant about it, I would suggest you just give it a try. Um, it is very scary. I'm still nervous sitting in front of the camera. But um, the community is great. They're very friendly, very encouraging. Um, you know, if they'll give you little tips or pointers if it's needed. Um, but yeah, just give it a try. You might hate it and not want to do it again, or you might love it. Uh, so, um, what else? Oh. I got two shout outs. My first shout, my first floss tube shout outs. Um, Sammy J Stitches and uh, Candy Stitches shouted me out in their videos. So that was exciting. I was watching them while I was working on Death by Cross Stitch and I heard my name. I was like, they're talking about me. <laughs> it was exciting and a little embarrassing. <laughs> um, and oh, I have a new floss tube shout out. Since my last video, I started watching um, Stitching in Doodah. It's two friends, um, they're teachers, and they are hysterical. <laughs> if you haven't watched them, you should definitely check out their channel. I, they're not new new, but they're kind of new-ish. Um, but I went back and I binged watched all their videos because they were cracking me up. Um, let's see. Oh, I had a birthday this week on Tuesday the 19th. I, um, I was considering making the long drive to go to a LNS. I guess it wouldn't really be an LNS if you have to drive over two hours, long distance LNS. But um, the one I was thinking of going to, I heard that they're closing and might not, oh, I forgot to tell you, Tucker's with us. <laughs> Are you almost done? Tucker. <laughs> Are you done now? Can I continue? Thank you. <laughs> um, oh, and I forgot to point out, I'm in a, a new location, which I'm sure you noticed. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. I feel like the lighting in my last location was better, but I'm hoping this one will be a little less shaky. But yeah, you're, uh, you're sitting on my kitchen island, and that right there is my living room. And of course you can see my fireplace. I actually, I made that, that mantle. But uh, 
what was I? Oh, um, so yeah, I was thinking about making the long drive for my birthday to go to an LNS, but the closest one is about two hours away, a little over. And I heard that that one is closing, so I didn't really want to drive all that distance because I don't like driving long distances and, you know, get there and they don't really have a lot to look at. I very, very briefly considered going the other direction to Vegas, to Stitcher's Paradise. I think that's what it's called. But I hate that drive. <laughs> I cannot stand that drive. It's about three, three and a half hours of empty desert. Just absolutely nothing but rocks and dirt as far as the eye can see. <laughs> it's mind numbing. So if I'm gonna do that drive, it's going to be like a pre-planned thing where I save up so I can go on a major shopping spree <laughs> and make it worth, you know, driving all that way. I'd probably maybe get a room and stay the night and see a show or something. Uh, so I didn't do that. <clears throat> but I did go down to Palm Springs and I spent the day shopping down there and then crafting. And then tomorrow, Saturday, um, I'm really excited. I'm going back down to Palm Springs. I'm going to see an early release of Shazam, which I'm really excited about. Uh, you can get the tickets on Fandango. And they're release. They're doing a um, early release two weeks before its um, official release. And I think it's only in select theaters. I'm not sure, but you have to get the tickets ahead of time on Fandango. Um, but I'm really looking forward to it. I'm not super into the superhero movies. Um, there's a few I like. I did go see Aquaman, mainly for Jason Momoa. <laughs> um, I'm a Superman girl, have been all, all my life. But um, <clears throat> I'm excited about this one because it's got Zachary Levi in it. And I loved his show Chuck. If you haven't seen that and you're looking for a good laugh, check that out. It's on, um, you can watch it on Amazon Prime. I believe all the seasons are on there. It's um, kind of a spy drama slash comedy. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry, I had to pause for a moment. I kind of lost my voice for a second there. And then Tucker had another itching attack. And as you can see, he has left us. Um, but I was talking about um, my birthday and going to see Shazam tomorrow and uh, Zachary Levi. Another show that he's in, uh, I was talking about Chuck, um, but another show that he's in that's really funny is, and also on Amazon Prime, is um, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Uh, he's only in a few episodes of the second season, but the whole thing is hilarious. Uh, I just actually rewatched both seasons uh, this last week. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that tomorrow. Um, I'm also going to do some stitchy related shopping while I'm down there. But oh, I mentioned my shopping for my birthday. So that takes me to I have an FO. It's not a stitchy FO, but it's stitchy related stitchy adjacent. <laughs> um, I've been watching Priscilla and Chelsea, the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch, and I love how they do their finishing where they um, put magnets and attach their cross stitches uh, to stuff with magnets. But I don't have a lot of room around my house to put a bunch of little tchotchkes and stuff. I love little tchotchkes and I'm sure I'll probably put some on my my mantle. I just I don't have a lot of room. Plus, out in the desert, uh, dust is a major issue out here. It's a constant battle. So, I got the idea. Um, I don't know if you can see it. My little entryway table there. I've been, um, for a while, I've been wanting to get something to put above that entryway table. Something kind of big. And so I got the idea to do a collage board. So I got all the um, 
stuff to do that while I was doing my birthday shopping. And I'll show you that. Pardon me. Oh, and I'm wearing a new Game of Thrones t-shirt. It says, what does it say? This is my spot. <laughs> That's Sheldon sitting on the Iron Throne. But here is my collage board I made. standing on my tiptoes. And yes, I know that spring is completely crooked, but I'm not redoing it. Come on, focus. Focus. Oh well. But it is, um, oh, there we go. I already had this frame in my garage and I just got a piece of um, some metal piece of sheet metal from Home Depot and I cut it to size and then I painted it with um, uh, the chalkboard spray paint and uh, sorry uh, yeah so I painted it with the chalkboard spray paint and unfortunately it's already starting to chip off in some areas I don't know if I just didn't let it dry long enough um, but my plan is I'll change that out um, each month, each season, do like a collage of little cross stitches. And in the meantime, since it's going to be a while before I have enough to put on it, I got stuff to make this little wreath for spring. I think I could probably use it for summer too. But I love the colors. And um, one of the things I'm going to have to get while I'm down the hill tomorrow is um, some better glue. I just used uh, hot glue on this because it's what I had. And all the magnets just popped off. <laughs> so I, that's why I couldn't show it to you actually on the collage board. And that brings me to... I thought I was going to be coming on here today to tell you I had an FO. But I actually have an FFO. Halloweenies! I finished it and then fully finished it. And I love it. I got, um, while I was down shopping um, for all the rest of that stuff, I wasn't planning on getting anything, any fabric for this because I figured I would have to wait until closer to Halloween to be able to find anything. But I just went over there and thought I'd look around and I found this checkered fabric or gingham, whatever you call it. And I thought it was perfect and it was on sale. And then this is like a, a burlap. I thought that would be cute with it and then this green cording. Um, I'm not completely happy with how the cut edges came together here. Uh, so if you have any tips on how to do that so that you don't see the cut edges, let me know in the comments. But yeah, other than that, I think it's really cute. I can't wait to hang it up. <laughs> I might go ahead and hang it up and not wait for Halloween. We'll see. So yeah, that's my finishes and my FFO, my very first. So that brings us to my progress on my whips. Um, on my last video, I was almost done with my second page on my um, mini Among the Flowers from Heaven and Earth Designs. And I said that I wanted to get that finished before I switched back to Death by Cross Stitch. And I got it finished, I think, the next day. So here it is. This page is one and two, and as you can see, this is a, the little girl's hair, and this is part of a flower, and another flower in her hair with the little feather coming out. I love the colors. I was a little, kind of, uh, I don't know about some of the colors in her hair, but I think it looks Great. And there was some oranges, and then I realized that the oranges were in the, the flowers. 
So I think once I restart, I'm not sure if I'm going to continue on this way to page three. I might move down here instead and do like a, a step pattern because that will get me to the little girl's face and the unicorn a little quicker. And then once I finished that, I got back to Death by Cross Stitch. And I had, oops, last time I showed you, I had, oops, come on, the whole top row. And since then, I finished the first page in the second row. I'm having trouble here. So this is the first page in the second row. I did um, my parents' initials in the 501. I don't know if that's showing up very well. Oh, there we go. And then I made a slight adjustment to the H. Um, the way it's charted, the, the line across the center kind of like dips down. And to me, it looked more like an M. So I just straightened the line out. And then I started on the second page of the second row. And I was really hoping to have that finished before I did this video, but it didn't happen. Um, this, my initial here, kind of, I got hung up on that. And then, oh, my arm's getting tired. There we go. And then <laughs> I, I had started the lion's head and I got maybe like to here through the tongue. And for some reason, I decided I wanted to move on to the crown instead of finishing the lion first. And thank goodness I did because I got part of the way through the crown and I stopped and I was like, I've got four rows left in the crown, but only two rows until I get to the top of the lion's head. Something's not right. So I had to look back and see what I had already done. And yeah, I was off by two stitches. So I had to frog the entire lion's head and uh, from here all the way up to here and redo it because I was off by two stitches. So that was frustrating, but I got it done. I just have this vining here and then the border at the bottom and then I'll be done with this page. I'm still not sure about my initial. Um, I posted it on Instagram and one of the Facebook groups that I'm not really liking the back stitching around the initial. Um, I had done it in pink. So if you saw those pictures, it was in pink and I got lots of suggestions. Some people said that, um, you know, you should really do the back stitching the same color as the lettering. And then some people suggested maybe I should go over, um, instead of one over one, do one over two. But that didn't really work because um, it's not all even number of stitches. So like there's some areas where it's three stitches. So I couldn't really do like one over two and then one. So I just did like over three. I don't know if you can really actually see it, but it does look better than it did before. But like this little squiggly do here, you can't really tell what that is. It just looks like, I don't know, a blob. So I did like the way it looked without the back stitching. So I might just take the back stitching out and just leave it without it. I don't know. 
I think I'm going to finish this page and then do the next page and get the other letter in and then I'll decide what I want to do about that. Oh, and you may have noticed I also made an adjustment to the J. The way it's um, charted, this part is straight. It's basically the L turned backwards and I wanted it to be curved. <laughs> so I wanted my H straight and my J curved. So I just took the, um, the sticky uppy part, <laughs> the up and down part of the J, and I attached it to the curved part of the Y. And I have, I just charted it out on some graph paper before I did it. And this is what I'm gonna do in a, another section down below. But yeah, I think it's, it's coming along pretty good. I'm excited. I don't know if I'm going to finish the whole row before I switch back to um, my Hade. We'll see. I might get sick of it. Uh, I am just about out of a crew, so that's one thing I'm going to have to pick up tomorrow while I'm down the hill. So those are my two whips now that I have finished Halloweenies. So that brings us to haul. I, um, I bid on and won an item on um, Michelle Garrett's auction on her Instagram. I actually, I bid on it, I wanna say it was either the first or second day that she had it listed and then I completely forgot about it. And then, um, you know, I wanna say it was that Sunday she messaged me, you know, congratulations, you won. And I was like, I won something? <laughs> and then I remembered, you know, that I had bid on this. But it is um, Under the Deep Blue Sea. These little mermaids. I love the little seahorse. As I mentioned in my first video, I'm a scuba diver. So, of course, this the hair on my lip. Um, you know, this was perfect for me. And this is a an exclusive. It was for the 2012 Stitch Ahoy cruise to the Western Caribbean. And I'm really jealous I didn't go on that. <laughs> it makes this cute little stitching box. I'm thinking I might, I don't know if I'll actually make it into the stitching box. I might do that one to hang in my bathroom. I think that would be cute. It says, my heart belongs to the deep blue sea. And then Michelle also included a couple pieces of fabric with it. I don't know if you can see the sparkle on that. I've never used sparkly fabric before, so that's kind of cool. And then this piece. And then um, I was watching one of the Kitten Stitchers videos, I think she called it Market Wrap Up, maybe? And uh, it was a really good video, if you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. But she was showing um, a lot of the, the new charts from Market. And there was one I saw that I hadn't seen before because I had been watching, you know, all the pictures on Instagram and all the videos. And I don't know if somebody had showed it and I just didn't see it, but this was my first time seeing it. And it was so cute, I had to get it. It's P. Roy from the Animal Cracker series by Stacy Stacy Nash Primitives. It's a slug wearing a bow tie. And since I've started stitching again, and especially since I've started watching floss tube videos, I'm learning some things about myself. And one of the things I've learned is that apparently I have an affinity for critters wearing people clothes. <laughs> so you got Halloweenies with the weenie dog in a witch hat. And then I have the turkey sausage with the weenie dogs in pilgrim hats. And now I've got a slug wearing a bow tie. 
I think that is adorable. So I ordered this from um, Teresa, the Kitten Stitchers website, which is um, Shakespeare's Peddler. And then of course, because it doesn't make sense to pay shipping and handling for one chart, I got, and I'm sure you've all seen this one, but I got the quilting bee from the blue flower because I think that is just gorgeous. And I got the spring squirrel also from the blue flower critter in people clothes. <laughs> we don't have squirrels out here in the desert. I kind of miss the pesky little critters. They're cute. And I love the acorns. I'm thinking P. Roy though is going to be my next stitch. Don't you think he would be cute on my collage board? crawling along the bottom of my collage board or the slugs crawl slithering slugging slugging along the bottom of my collage board or climbing up the side <laughs> I think he's adorable this one I'm probably gonna have to send out to get finished because I want it finished um, the way she has it with but with a magnet attached to the back and I don't know how to do that and I don't own a sewing machine so yeah I'm probably gonna have to send that out to get finished oh and then when you order from kitten stitcher she sends you this little card And that is um, Jenny Bean. She got that made up by an artist on Etsy, I believe. And she sends a, an envelope with it so you can mail it to a friend or something. I might turn it into a floss card. I've seen um, Michelle Garrett doing that a lot. I think that's a cute idea. And I think I've covered everything. I've shown you everything. Um, I had an idea to do a discussion topic. Um, if you're not interested in something like that, you just wanted to see the stitching, then thank you for watching and have a nice day. Um, but if you stick around, <laughs> it's kind of getting a little into the personal. And I'm a very private person, so I'm like, stepping way out of my comfort zone here. <laughs> um, but a friend said something to me recently that really got me thinking and I thought it would make an interesting, interesting discussion topic. Um, Y'all might not agree with me. You might be like, why are you talking about this? We don't care about this. Just show us the stitching. But I think it's interesting. Uh, as I mentioned in my previous video, I'm not married. I'm single. Eternally single. <laughs> Uh, but I'm on um, one of the dating apps. They're awful. They're all awful. There's no good dating app. Um, but my friend, I was talking to her, and she said that I probably shouldn't mention the cross-stitching. <coughs> Excuse me. And that got me thinking. And I was wondering, is that true? And I was curious, um, you know, what you guys think and about your experiences for the, um, the single stitchers who are trying to date. <laughs> is that something that you talk about? Like if you're, say you're on a date and across from a man, woman, whatever, and they ask you, so, well, you know, what do you like to do for fun or what are your hobbies? Do you mention it or is that something that you hold back? And then for the married stitchers, or the stitchers in, you know, relationships, um, were you a stitcher at the time that you met your significant other? And if so, 
was it something that you talked about, you know, that you mentioned? Did they know about it? Uh, or did they find out about it later? And it's, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. It's a silly thing. But um, I know there's this perception out there about needlework that it's, you know, little old ladies. Um, I posted a picture of um, death in my personal Facebook page and yeah, everybody loved it, but there was one person, it was just like a work acquaintance from an old job, made the comment, um, did you buy a rocking chair yet with the little laughing emoji? And it didn't bother me. You know, she was insinuating that um, the only people who cross stitch are little old ladies in rocking chairs. I'm losing my voice again. Sorry. <laughs> and um, like I said, it didn't really bother me. It was just, she was trying to be funny and it was a comment made in ignorance. Because, you know, from watching Floss Tube, it's a huge community. You know, the stitching community, we've got people from all over the world, of all different backgrounds, um, all ages. I mean, we've got um, the sassy stitching sisters and brother. Uh, and then we've got floss tubers who have a little more life experience and <laughs> a little more wisdom, we'll say. We've got men, women, you know, there's something for everybody. So, I don't know, it just, it made me think, and I thought it would be an interesting discussion topic. So let me know in the comments what you think, what your, your thoughts and your experiences. And I think that's going to wrap it up. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, let me know, like I said, about the new location, if you think this one's better, or if you think my previous location was better. Um, and... I think that's it. Uh, have a great day. It's, um, it's Friday, so have a great weekend. And that's all. Until next time, peace. And let me know if that's stupid. <laughs>